Okay, cool. All right, I just started. Okay, cool. So what's up, Quasi? Here with Quasi, Bootsy Greenwood here. My name's Owen Hunt. You know, I go by Bootsy <laughs> because of, I don't know if you've ever seen Grey's Anatomy. Have you ever seen that show? Yeah. So there's a doctor, Dr. Owen Hunt. So like, oh, my, yeah, yeah, everybody. The ginger guy. Yep, the ginger. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so people love him. But I, I used to date a girl who was like so into that show. And then, uh -huh. you know, like then I was like, well, that just ruined my Google cred, you know. So, <laughs> Dr. Owen Hunt. Yeah. I mean, the, the <laughs> doctor part, I rather like, but I haven't earned it. So <laughs> that's not something that I can go with yet. But, um, but yeah, so that's why I go by. That's my stripper name is Bootsy Greenwood. So <laughs> You know, there's nobody else named that. So I don't think there's anybody else named Quasi. Is it Yo here? Joe here. Joe here. Okay, cool. Sorry yeah. about that. I apologize. No, it's cool. It's cool. It's so cool to meet you, man, and and have a chat. You too, man. You too. I've Love seen you. Mm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I I I think you were the first one to actually narrate or read out the uh, Tufty the Tufty book. I think I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time. So have I. It, is it Tufty or Tufty? I believe it is Tufty. Tufty. Yeah, I say <laughs> Tufty in the book and it's like, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> whoops. But I mean, you know, it's, it's about the message. It's, it's such a good book too. Like I've listened to it a bunch. I need to listen to it a couple more times. Cause like yeah, the Transurfing, when I narrated that, like I had, re I had read Transurfing several times already and then I recorded it. And then uh, with Tufty, I just, I got it. And I was like, well, I'm going to immediately sort of record this as soon as I got it. So I didn't pronounce it right. If I would have known who to ask, I would have pronounced it right. So that's going to, that's going to tag along with me for a while. Man, I'm, I'm a big fan of what you're putting out, dude. It's really, really good. And I want to talk about uh, some of the stuff that um, we're both, we're both, you know, looking into and some, some specific things that you've put uh, out are, uh, you know, like talking about certain techniques and ideas as well as like the karma stuff. But we can start by talking about transurfing and how uh, we, we, you got into that. Um, mm -hmm. Love to hear about that. Yeah. So, you know, beginning when I started off with all of this, I just, I was really into video games. I absolutely was a video game fanatic and I was just completely into the idea of leveling up a character in a video game. And one day I, thought, well, if I spend 12 hours a day playing video games trying to level up a character in that screen, why don't I just do this here? So I started to search on YouTube about, okay, how do I, you know, back then I was kind of like a nerdy kid. I wanted some attention from girls in my school from even just, just to make friends. And that came really hard to me, just socially. I was very awkward and I always wanted to become better at that aspect. So I was like, okay, how do I get girls to like me? How do I get you know, how do I make more friends? How do I become popular in school? And then I got into all these YouTube videos and one day I came across the law of attraction and this completely intrigued me. So I was like, Oh, I can use this, just my thoughts, the power of my thoughts to change my reality. That's insane. So my journey started off by going to the gym and you know how in Tufti or Tufti, they talk about how, you know, there's triple action. You've got to propel the current frame or propel yourself from within Mm -hmm. It means that you've got to start taking steps to self-improvement in order to find your life's purpose. That's exactly what I did. But unknowingly, I began with the gym, trying to get better at the gym every single day, trying to build muscles because I thought, okay, if I just build muscles, then girls will like me more because I'll have these big muscles and you know, I'll be more popular. Yes. And I, I got the muscles and I saw that there was improvement. There was a drastic improvement, but it wasn't because of the muscles itself. It was because my self-image changed. And the same thing happened when I was younger and I was completely even at a worse state there, like back when I was in England. And my teeth were crooked and I always thought it was because of my teeth that I would get bullied and I didn't have the self-confidence that I wanted. But back then I didn't know about law of attraction or any of this stuff. So I, I just went to school every day, got bullied, you know, gave away my lunch <laughs> and my lunch money. Oh my uh, <laughs> just came home depressed. I was just completely ostracized yeah. there. And uh, you know, that was a different part of life. I'm glad I went through that experience as well. Uh, but then after I got braces, I always thought that once my teeth get straight, then I will be this person. Then I will be that person. Funny enough, that's exactly what happened. After I got braces, got them off, I actually went from becoming, you know, complete loser to complete, like one of the most popular guys in school. And I was like, wow, power of braces. But little did I know that people with crooked teeth do become successful. Short people do become successful. Mm -hmm. So it's not the teeth that made the difference. It's about who I perceive myself as, my self-image of me after fixing my teeth and before fixing my teeth. 
So this was a big breakthrough for me recently once I found out about identity shifting and then you know, before that, transurfing. Even transurfing didn't make that click for me. And that's why I really teach the Reality Mastery program because it's about shifting someone at the very core through, I don't know if you're familiar with David R. Hawkins. His work really pointed me to the becoming and the being paradigm. Mm -hmm. So there is being, there is doing, and then there is having. Having is the lowest paradigm you can come from. It's what you just focus on taking, taking, taking. You know, doing is when you try to do something in order to get a result. So I've had clients who have told me, but quasi, you know, I've tried this frailing principle from transurfing. You know, I've tried to give to people, but they just don't give back to me. But that again, defeats the whole purpose of giving, right? If you're right. giving in order to take, that's not sharing. That's, that's <laughs> like bartering. You're bartering. <laughs> you're trying to take something that's still taking. So even that didn't work. And, uh, you know, the true giving that you give comes from a state of being. That's what complete abundance is. That's what sharing is. You say, I'm good within myself. But because I feel so good, I can give to you. I don't need anything from you. I'm just giving. That is what complete abundance is. So that's why I saw that the being paradigm was the com a complete game changer for me. And any area of my life that I wanted to get better at, even at the gym, even business-wise, even relationships-wise, grow school, grades-wise, social circle-wise, it was really, really systematically possible, all as a result of which version of myself that I became. So yeah, that's, that's how my journey evolved. That's also, awesome. I'd love to know. I'd love to know how about how about yours? How'd yeah, you yeah, stuff? sure, sure. So, um, uh, so I'm 37. It's my birthday today. Woo! -hoo. Happy birthday, Booty! Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, so about seven years ago, I uh, had a bad breakup with a girl, and I was uh, reading it's always a lot. Those. Yeah, I was reading a Makes lot. You really think? <laughs> and that was 2012 too, which is kind of interesting. But I started reading a lot of these books and going into the conspiracy sort of wormhole. You know, like listen to Alex Jones and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and I uh, just got like super deep into that. And I got really, really, really depressed after a while. And I was living in my dad's basement at the time, all of that, like the whole, like so cliche, right? <laughs> totally. I'm in my totally. mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and eventually, like, I, I got tired of it, you know, like, and I, I stumbled upon like some other ideas and just started to look into something else. And again, I was like, well, I, you know, I was studying like uh, feminism and wound up buying a, a product that was like, uh, that was like teaching about social, how to, you know, how to be social because I'd gotten to the point where I was so like in my own head, you know, and so like just logically driven, I'd become an objectivist at this point. I had I basically cut myself off from the feminine aspect of myself, like with the mm -hmm. emotional part of myself and became this very logical, angry victim. And so I found that and, uh, and it was a social circle blueprint. And I watched that uh, program and in it, he just barely even uh, mentions the reality transurfing book. Um, but as even before that, like I started to get into self-help, you know, to learn more about that. Cause I was like, this is not working. I've got to do something. So I was <laughs> determined to be successful and I bought marketing products and I was going to trick people psychologically into buying something and make a bunch of money. And like, if you can't mm -hmm. meet them, join them became my paradigm at that point. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to do this too. I'm going to become what Dan Bilzerian or something. And mm -hmm. then, you know, and then, so I was like, found reality transurfing. And I was like, wait a second. Like, I've gone from this side to this side, right? And I just totally swung. And mm -hmm. I was like, I need to find my balance. Uh, well, I didn't know that, but I'm sure my subconscious did. But as soon as I heard the words reality transurfing out of uh, Luke's mouth, I was like, I've got to find this book. So I found the first book um, as a PDF file. And uh, then I had to order steps one through five off of Amazon, which I did. And I just immediately just started consuming the book and it had put a lot of things together. A lot of ideas that, uh, that I had found separately, but mm -hmm. they were all interlinked and in transurfing. Like, mm -hmm. um, I'd read this book called outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill, which I highly recommend. Um, mm -hmm. and as well as self-reliance by Ralph Waldo Emerson and the Kibalion. Um, and so between those books, like I had a little bit of an overview of, of sort of where I needed to go. Um, and, but reality transurfing took all of those elements and sort of tied them together beautifully. And then at that point I was like, I'm so obsessed and I've got to share this book, which I'm very happy that I did. Uh, I even tried to like get permission, but like that, 
the Russian publisher and like the way servers work and all that kind of stuff. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, it's just really confusing, but I'm really glad that I did that because it was only available in this like weird computer voice or whatever. And I was like, mm -hmm. I've got to, I've also, I started really recording it mostly for myself. It's like, I am, this is, I, I made a decision. I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm doing the reality transurfing way. Because, you know, you read all these books and there's all these different techniques and then you just become overrun with mm -hmm. techniques and ideas. Yeah. And it's like, dude, if pick one thing, like yeah. do you, just, just do yoga, just meditate, just figure yeah. out what it is that works for you and do that one thing and stop like, oh, well, when I do this exercise, I'm going to do because it's like you said of the do have be thing. It's like, we think we have to do and we think we have to have things in order to be the thing that we wanted. If we just jump that and skip a step and just be the thing that we want, then all the do's and have's just come together of their exactly. own. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, wow. that's kind of how I got into this whole thing, you know. And uh, It's quite the journey. Yeah, there's some interesting books you mentioned there. I've only read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, not, uh, what is it, Devil? Outwitting the Devil. Dude, Outwitting the Devil. It's a page turner, man. Like, uh, it's, uh, he claims that he has literally sat down with the devil and has the opportunity to ask questions, uh, to the devil. Um, and the devil claims to be the negative half of the atom, not a horny tailed, you know, <laughs> being right. Which is pretty freaking accurate. And then he goes on in that book. Now this book wasn't published until 2011. The family wouldn't allow it to be published because it goes so hard after all the institutions, the church diet. There's things in that book that there's no freaking way. There's no way in hell that he could have known. Like he had to have some other, source of information so you start to wonder like did this dude really sit down with the devil or what i mean it's the really? second best book i've ever read kind of like trend surfing huh it's like yeah. how do you know all of this stuff like exactly what? exactly very much like the main idea in that book other than is the law of hypnotic rhythm he says that like the reason why the universe works the way it does and the uh the planets revolve the way they do is because it's just happened so so many times over and over and over and the patterns established and he says that or satan says that he owns 98 out of 100 men's minds because they're on autopilot. They don't actually consciously think for themselves. Ooh. Yeah, it's brutal, Ooh. dude. It's so, That's so, so crazy. Good. But even the, uh, the whole like reality transurfing, like the advantage or Tufty uh, advantage principle, he even uh -huh. highlights in there. He says, for every action, there's a seed for an effect. So for every uh -huh. cause, there's a seed for an effect and it's either positive or negative. And guess what? You decide. So yeah, mind blowing, such a good book. I, I couldn't recommend it enough. That's crazy. And all of that stuff actually got me a lot into the yogic sciences and especially karma. And you know, it made me really wonder, like, why do we come the way that we do? Like, why are you born Bootsy Greenwood, Owen Hunt? Like, right. why are you born in this body with all of this stuff? And you know, th this, like what really, I saw that what really creates reality, what I'm learning right now is, is karma. Karma is the only thing that creates reality. And it's not the, like the actual, like what goes around comes around karma, but karma literally means action. In Sanskrit, karma literally means action. And karma is external action and kriya is internal action. So the path to enlightenment, I think they call it, uh, there's four or five things you can do. There is bhakti, which means devotion. And through just completely surrendering yourself to a guru or to something, some greater cause other than yourself, you can go to enlightenment. You can use karma to go to enlightenment, just completely just doing external work. You can use kriya, which is internal work. And there is uh, intellect, uh, uh, jnana, mm. jnana yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, kriya yoga, karma yoga, all of these. These are the fourfold paths to enlightenment. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm 100% accurate in saying this, but this is what I understand. And from reading all of this stuff, the Kriya, the internal action is what actually breaks you free from this bondage. Anytime, like whenever we're trying to create a particular reality, whether it be positive or negative, you're just essentially creating bondage to what's material. Like th that's exactly what's happening. If you want positive karma, you're still creating bondage. If you want negative karma, you're still creating bondage. Mm -hmm. So this is actually binding you to this life right here, this physical reality. But there's an ultimate reality beyond the physical form. Right. And uh, what I found out recently was that in the beginning, there was really nothing like nothingness is the ultimate form. 
complete emptiness or akashic, the akashic element. And this nothingness went to awareness. Awareness transformed into energy. Energy transformed into the mind. Hmm. The mind transformed into the body. Wow. So what you call as the body right now is just internally manufactured. Most people, when they get sick, they go to the repair shop. They don't go to the internal energies that actually created them. Damn, so something interesting that I was reading was that when the, you know, when a baby is born, it's just a physical body up until 40 days, then a pranic body comes in and it becomes a being. That's why the abortion law is that within, you know, after 40 days, you can't abort. You mustn't abort. That's why they prevent that. I think someone knew that as an ancient wisdom wow. from a long time ago, mm -hmm. but the character, you'll see that no two babies are alike. Like, shouldn't it be that two babies are alike? Yeah. But they're not. They cry in one way. One baby cries in one way. One baby demands in another way. It's just this karmic substance begins to develop being attached to the pranic body. <laughs> and, you know, if someone dies prematurely through an accident and, you know, the, the karma has it run out, the process of living, if you live in the way it was meant to be lived and experience every single emotion correctly, like if you experience everything fully, then karma is running its natural path. So this lifetime that we're all living now is part of the karma. It's been determined in the past. So any thought that you have right now is determining your future. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Tufti and all that stuff. Like this current frame cannot be changed no matter what you do. It's already been determined through your past thoughts, actions, your past karma. Karma action literally means whatever thought you have, whatever identity, whatever beliefs, whatever emotions, whatever it is that you're internally, externally, whatever it is you're doing and being having, that is determining what's coming next. So in that sense, reality creation is 100% possible, but there's a large barrier to it based on what spiritual practices you're doing. How much, how bound are you? How like certain illnesses that happen, they are karmic. They can be karmic, but they can also be repaired through just knowing how to manipulate your energies. So that this, this is some of the crazy stuff that I'm learning right now. And uh, it's a book called Mystics Musings by Sadhguru. Definitely give that book a read. Okay. It's a very big book, but some crazy stuff. And is it like uh, a lot of the stuff it's determined before birth? Is that kind of? Yeah, but it's not that you can't break free from it. And okay. you know what I've slowly grown to realize is that consciousness is the ultimate key to, to anything. Mm -hmm. Like consciousness is the ultimate technique. Anything that works on raising your consciousness will eventually lead you to more and more freedom. Karma, like you said, 98% of men's minds is controlled because they're unconscious. Mm -hmm. If you work on becoming more and more conscious, then your reality and your destiny can be controlled by you. Absolutely, it can. Yeah, dude, that is so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that. You know, like as we learn this stuff, it just gets more and more advanced and, and, and bizarre, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it's like, it just defies like what we're you know, traditionally taught and stuff, but that makes so much sense. Another thing I heard you say that I really liked was that uh, everybody keeps taking things and they're like, oh, well, you have to do 40% action and 60% mental stuff. But you're like, no, dude, that's all the same thing. Like it's, they're not different. They're not separate. Taking action is part of your mentality because if you're exactly. lazy, then you're just being lazy, right? <laughs> exactly. It's just a reflection of your internal state of being. Your external world is just a reflection of your internal world. And, you know, if you're unconsciously letting your internal world go by the karmic substance that's been unfolding over and over, then you're not being a, crea you're not being a conscious creator of your destiny. You're just letting what's supposed to happen happen in this drama that keeps playing itself over and over. Some people, you'll see that a lot of people keep living the same day. It's almost like Groundhog Day. That's what it is why so many people are so concerned with enlightenment and realization, even though they have no memories of their past lives. Like who cares if I'm born again? Right. But people are like, Oh no, I don't want to be born again. Like I want to get enlightened. It's because they, it, on a larger scale, this is what's happening. They, they keep playing themselves over and over again. It's like the same. I don't know if you watch the show Lucifer. The TV uh, show. It's on Netflix. Uh, I've seen a couple of episodes actually. It's really good. The, the depiction of hell there is people playing the same scenario over and over again. The mm -hmm. really horrific, traumatic scenarios that, that have happened in their lives. And when they go to hell, pe things that they feel guilty for, things they would feel those negative emotions for, those, keep, those events keep happening over and over again like it's Groundhog Day. Wow. So that is what you know, hell is, right? Hell is something, hell is just unconscious. 
Yeah. Something that's, it keeps, it's like Groundhog Day every day. Who yeah. wants that? Consciousness just, is the only way out. Yep. It's just ignorance is all it is. Yep. That makes so much sense. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm making a couple of notes here. Uh, that's so interesting to me. It's crazy how all this stuff folds together. And like with, with Tufty too, it's like, or Tufty, uh, <laughs> all it is, is your attention. That's all you are. All you yeah. are is your consciousness your and or your attention, you know, to put it down to brass tacks. And that's why he, he is saying that, like, is it, we're not conscious of our own attention. How can you be like a higher version of yourself if you're not aware of the fact that you're, you need to be aware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, it's a little yeah, without the observer, you know, does the event even happen? Exactly. And that's, and that's quantum physics for you right there because like that consciousness is what influences the experiment. And that's what Napoleon Hill talked about in that book, even however long ago it was like, and then of course with reality transurfing, Vadim's like, and then of course, you know, Tufty as well. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. Well, what are you working on now? As far, like, I know you got like a pretty good uh, bit of folks there on your channel um, and you're making videos a lot. Are you making videos like every day? Yeah. Yeah. Seven days a week. It's, it's actually getting kind of crazy. So with all the workload that's coming in from clients, from acquisition, et cetera, et cetera, just working on all that stuff, it's getting tough. So what I do is I make, edit, you know, create, edit, and release all seven videos in one day. So okay. it goes like first four hours of the day creating videos and then three hours editing and then four hours releasing. So this okay. is all done. Well. It, it can get like really overwhelming. So sure. I'm trying to at least delegate something or make less videos a week. I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, I've, I, you know, I know a lot of people who do that. It's like a, the 360 thing or whatever. It's like, uh, the, batching. Know, make, yeah. Like in a whole and, and making videos for like everyday releases for an entire year. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Aaron does that. But it but gives no, you crazy momentum though. It does. It does. And I understand how the algorithm works and all that yeah. as well. It's just not something that I'm, you know, I have yeah. physically able to do. Definitely. It's not something you need to do. It's just yeah. something that you want to challenge yourself one, one year to go for it. Dude, it's a great, it's definitely a great exercise. I mean, even just getting in front of the camera uh, to yeah. begin with was uh, for me a huge hurdle. Cause it's like, dude, have you seen my first video? I don't Crazy. think so, but I remember your hair is a little bit longer, but, um, but yeah, like my first video too, even just, and I only made it just like a couple, maybe three months ago. I can look back at that and just be like, Oh my God, it feels like it was three years ago. You know, like I just haven't three months ago. Wow. You're doing super yeah. well on YouTube, man. Yeah. Well, this it's, it's because of the book, like, and, um, and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of referrals and a lot of people have reached out to me. Like I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Like I've had a lot of, um, pretty prominent people reach out and say, Hey, you know, like for instance, Jessa Reed, the comic and, uh, Karen Rontowski, the comic have both reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, I, I've been listening to you. You'd read me this book. Karen, for instance, is like, um, dyslexic. So she can't uh, physically read. So she was like, dude, thank you so much for what you've done. And I got to be on her podcast, a paranormal Karen uh, podcast. And then I spoke with Jessa and, uh, and that's going to be on the reality transurfing podcast, which I'm really mm -hmm. excited about. Um, but yeah, so like a lot of people have reached out because they've gotten a lot of value from, from Vadim's work. And you know, all I did was read it, you know, but, um, you know, there's a lot of editing and stuff, but as far as like being in front of the camera, I was like, eh, I don't really, f I'm not <laughs> feeling that, you know, but then I was like, well, a lot of people were, were asking questions about the book and I was like, well, I guess I can maybe make a, you know, just like a chapter summary of each chapter or something like that. So hmm. That's when I started and then I just, I've been making whatever video I sort of whimsically feel like making. I, I, I like having conversations with people like yourself too, because I've been watching you and, and several other people just being like, wow, because there's so much interesting information and it all dovetails together. So mm -hmm. and I, and I think it's fun to, uh, to collaborate anyway. Like I've always been a very collaborative person by nature. So I enjoy that. Um, I'm, I'm introvert extrovert, which is like kind of a weird thing, but like I can That's be a, alone and all that, but I really like uh, working with other people. Yeah, I can agree with that too. You can just choose who you want to be consciously. Yeah, exactly. So um, if you, would you tell me a little bit about like, your program? I'm, I'm thinking about putting something together. So I'd, I'm curious to know. Yeah. So what do you want to know? Uh, like, uh, I just kind of want to know like what you're trying to do for folks exact, like 
is, is coaching, uh, are you, is it like an educational kind of thing or is it more? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's a coaching program. So okay. what I like to do is people have different goals that they want to attain. And, you know, they've tried out traditional law of attraction methods and techniques. And I saw that when I tried out techniques, I never got results. And it wasn't results that I could keep. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you get to keep, right? Right. So when I saw that, I saw that it didn't matter what technique I tried out, but rather who I became first. So all of the self-image stuff. So what I help people do is shift at the identity level that really causes a shift in their realities. And uh, we spend around six weeks doing this. And basically we work from the identity level to the beliefs level, to the emotions level, to the action level and uh, changing all the habits that people have. And at the end of the day, my true belief is that you shouldn't have any habits in the first place because habit means unconscious. You should be doing any, everything that you do unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Habit is just a safety net. Yep. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so like, it's like your story about the braces and realizing that. And then in, uh, in Tupti too, it talks a lot about like, um, like you're the self on the other side of the mirror, you know, and like, uh, like mm-hmm. the, the mirror is great for a lot of this, uh, a lot of this stuff as well. But just knowing that, um, who you think you are is absolutely everything you know it, it mm-hmm. completely it completely changes you from a subconscious level and you can't mm-hmm. like you couldn't be like a higher version of yourself and identify with that from a lower consciousness state so mm-hmm. shifting the identity it makes a lot of sense that that's going to have all the uh, all the all the effects like that's the ultimate cause that's the beginning mm-hmm. that's the place to start from and that's, that's and great. and also i had big trouble really digesting this stuff after learning about concepts from like yogic sciences and in yoga they tell you you shouldn't identify with anything you know because really what you see right now what you call as me what you call as this is my bottle this is my car this is mine mine when you say mine you're really making that thing an extension of yourself so you're beginning to identify with it it's kind of like the torturous hell that voldemort had to live kind of like making a horcruxes because if you lose that thing then you're you've essentially lost part of yourself. It's kind of like when you get into a relationship and this is especially helpful for some of my clients who go through breakups. When you go through a big breakup, it literally feels like a part of you has been lost. Like you lose an identity. And what first time I learned of this was from, uh, I think the tipping point from Malcolm Gladwell. Okay. And, uh, he was talking about how there is this thing called transactive memory. So if you think about it right now, you know, you don't really memorize every single number in the phone book. You just know the location of the phone book and where it's kept, right? And that kind of has the memory attached to it. But if you lost the phone book, then you would feel pain because you sort of identify with that aspect of it, where the numbers, are, individual numbers are stored, and this is important to me, blah, blah, blah. Importance is basically identification. Mm-hmm. That's all essentially it is. It kind of reminds me of transurfing a little bit too, because your brain doesn't really store information. It just knows the location of where everything is stored. Yep. So that's why there was so much uh, similarities between transurfing and things I've actually learned. But anyway, going to that identification was a big one. And yeah, most of the time when you lose a partner, because what happens is in relationships, men and women, they sort of take up roles and they do this unconsciously. It's like, okay, you're responsible for this, this, and this, and I'm responsible for this, this, and this. So when they split up, a part of you has been lost because she was responsible for that. And I was responsible for this. Now I don't have anyone to memorize that and do that chore and that chore and sort of give me that fulfillment. So that's exactly what's happening. You're losing a literal part of yourself. So now the recovery process is you being whole again within yourself. This is what the spiritual journey is. Identifying with the part of you that is ephemeral. That's forever. That's eternal. Yep. That's really good. Yeah. One of the guys that I've been working with, uh, his name's Angel Gomez or Angel Gomez. God, I'm, I'm just having a hard time pronouncing anything these days. I'm from the South, so don't hold it against me. <laughs> um, but like he talks a lot uh, about attachments and aversions. And, and I've, I had the opportunity to work with him, just like releasing it, releasing different ideas that you have about yourself, the things that you like about yourself as well mm-hmm. as the things that you dislike about yourself. Because like, mm-hmm. as he says, like uh, a Ferrari is just a car in two weeks. You know, it's like, 
And if you have all this importance about it and you're just like, Oh my God, you know, this is you got to have this thing. And then you get it right. Or like, let's say you want a partner or something like that. And it means so much to you. Well, as soon as you get that thing, you're just going to crash hard Yeah, and it's you're like, going to oh, have next? buyers or re- buyers remorse from it. Yeah, exactly. So like, figuring out a way to sort of like, just let go of who you think you are, what you like Mm -hmm. about yourself. You know what you, I work on like, I'm working on just doing more comedy stuff. And like, literally when we're in the session, he's just like telling me shit, like you're not funny, you know? And like, (laughs) you're not, you know? And so, and like, and honestly just like getting to those very deep, you know, deep, deep anchors and attachments that are in there uh, Mm -hmm. to sort of, purge that stuff out because if you care so much it's like if i if i for instance if i'm doing comedy and i care how funny i am well i'm going to be a lot less funny you know i'm going to be more conservative and i'm also going to you know like it's going to it's going to matter and it's going to affect my performance going into it whereas if it's like i'm just going to be myself i wrote my set or whatever and this i'm happy with it and i'm just going to go with this instead of like second guessing myself and making a big deal out of it because a lot of that hesitation comes mm-hmm. from, you know, that, that mismanagement of expectations and, I, yeah. and, and identifying as a certain thing, like, Oh my God, I have to be like the funniest person on this show. And if I'm not, then, you know, cause I've seen a lot of different people either develop or get worse, honestly, because they get super far in their head as a result mm-hmm. of, of trying this thing out. So, um, so I find that to be really, really cool. It's like, Vadim says to just go and take, right? Like go to the mail letterbox. That's so much yeah. easier. Said go to the sandwich done. shop, take yeah. it. Yeah. The process of life is such that eventually you will build attachment. That is just the nature of karma. Like mm-hmm. if you live complete, cool. like in a, there's always going to be a certain level of unconsciousness until you get to higher and higher energy levels. And you'll see that, you know, a funny thing that I've noticed is you'll see that a lot of spiritually enlightened people, they get very, very still and not inert, but they get still. Stillness is basically when the energy is vibrating at such a high level, you can't even see that it's moving anymore, Hmm. right? Kind of like a tire that's spinning. Exactly. Like you can't see it move anymore because you can't detect it. That's what stillness is. You get so, your vibration gets so high that you get completely still within your nature. That is what the ultimate nature of life is. Just stillness, nothingness, right? And at that point, you can reach states like Maha Samadhi, which means that you actually, your body can't hold on to this energy anymore because the energy is just so, it's vibrating at such a high frequency, your body can't hold on anymore. Like right now, you and I, the spirit, it's like holding, the soul is being held on by the body. You're thinking that the soul is taking place in the body, but the body is actually holding on to this energy until the karma plays itself out. And once you've run out of Parabdha Karma for this one lifetime, you naturally go into, you know, leaving the body and taking on another womb for the next cycle of Parabdha Karma to run out. So this is just playing itself out over and over again until, you know, there's none left and you don't stop creating anymore. So the nature of any spiritual practice is to work out karma, but in a quicker process. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, so like Robert Anton Wilson stuff, they talk about like, you know, passing through all these levels of, of consciousness and it's similar to David R. Hawkins and and some of those ideas. Exactly. Um, But yeah, once you, the idea is that especially like Kundalini and like, uh, and, uh, Tantra is like that Mm -hmm. you, you have so much energy, so much chi in your body that builds Mm -hmm. up and builds up and builds up and builds up until finally. And that's why, you know, like a monk would take a vow of celibacy, for instance, is like until finally there's so much energy that you just like explode to those higher, uh, Mm -hmm. states of being. So it's very similar to that karmic process that you're talking about, which is really cool. I love hearing about the, uh, the more ancient ideas of it. And like, Cause I think we lost, I think we've lost like a lot of uh, oh, yeah. information over oh, the past yeah. however 100%. many centuries, you know, it's interesting. Like ancient history and like all the cuneiform tablets and stuff that haven't even been translated. They're just stacked up mm-hmm. in, in stone. And it's like, if you really wanted to get a message to somebody, would you use paper or, you know, would you use YouTube uh, or would you use a freaking rock? You know what I'm saying? Like, like we're going to etch this in stone. That's like, that's like tattooing the earth. You know what I mean? Like this is going to, we need, we, this is important, you know, like we need to get this to people. So, you know, most of the ancient uh, knowledge is just, it's just gone. Like uh, of this continent and South America, 
as mm -hmm. well as even in Europe and stuff. Who knows what's in the Vatican? But so basically all that's left is the stuff that's, uh, you know, from uh, India and, and mm -hmm. Asia, you know, the, 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 all that stuff. So it's really cool. They've been really, really long lasting with all of that stuff. Yeah, it's, and, and it's really cool to hear you talk about that because I know there's like a lot of truth in that. Yeah. Um, and even the Russian stuff, it doesn't seem Eastern, but it is Eastern, you know, mm -hmm. like, and, and it's weird. Cause I think about like from a very American perspective, like, and the self-help kind of stuff where we're like, Oh, we have to create our reality. And then Vadim's like, no, you just choose because every mm -hmm. single reality or all these potentials already exist. You just have to decide. And of course you've got to know how to do that but it makes a lot of sense to think of it that way. And it makes it a lot more accessible as well. Cause mm -hmm. I used to think that way when I first got into self-help, I was like, I've got to do all this stuff and create all this and work, 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 work until I was just like burnt, man. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like he's dead on the floor and it's like, well, dude, whatever it was that you wanted, it was there the whole time. All you had to do is just reach out and grab it. You just need to understand how, how to do that. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, dude, it's awesome. I'm really excited. And if, um, just to share this with so many people, cause like for a while I'm like, am I crazy? You know? <laughs> cause like I, I just committed so I hard every day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still think that dude, sometimes I even doubt if, if any of this stuff even works. Like is the law of attraction real? Is manifestation even real? Sure. Like, is transurfing real? Right. You get right. to that point sometimes. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's all just hard work. Come on. <laughs> well, if, you know, if we're all, you know, if we're all sharing in the delusion, then that at least makes it a little bit more fun. And uh, <laughs> it at least gives us some, um, some, some company, you know, at least there's good company. So it's, it's really cool to be able to talk to folks who are also on this journey because it's not a lot of us. It's a small community. Yeah. I think it's growing though. Definitely. And it I definitely, love to see it. It definitely is. I am too. I'm like really happy to see it. Uh, and you know, I'm trying to help as, as in, in any way that I can. And I'm excited to hear what you're doing for folks. Cause I know it's incredibly valuable. Um, so, you know, I kind of want to, I wanted to talk to you about that as well as just some of the ideas that you've been sharing because, uh, they're really, really, really good. Um, also I'd say like, we'd love to have you, uh, contribute, uh, in any way that you would be interested in at, at Transurfing TV. I'll talk to Renee. And Absolutely. Like, speaking with quasi, you know, and I'm like, she's like, Oh, see if he wants to make a couple of videos or even stuff that you've uh, already made. We'd, we'd love it. Um, so you just send it on. And, uh, Sonny, Sonny Sharma, uh, for instance, yeah. I'm speaking with him tomorrow. Uh, I'm really excited. I spoke with him for the podcast, but like there's so many of those that I've already recorded and like mm -hmm. only have so much time bought on like Spotify and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, uh -huh. I don't know when that's going to come out. So I was like, <laughs> let's have a chat, you know, cause I would have, I would have said the same thing. I was like, you want to be on the podcast or whatever. But it's like, there's such a delay there, you know? So I was like, why not, why not chat, you know? Cause, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll just put it out as like, whatever this is on YouTube. Um, and then maybe have some audience share, you know, and, 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 you know, just kind of, yeah, collaborate. So yeah, I, I would love to, uh, love to have you. Uh, I think, uh, there's a lot of ideas being kicked around too in within that whole, I guess, collective or conglomerate or whatever it's called um about like just some different um types of content that we could be uh putting out too so anything oh, that's that cool comes to mind you know like a talk show or like a i don't know like whatever like i'm working on something right now with renee where we're just going through every single concept at, in depth and it's going to be incredibly valuable valuable uh and she it's just me just basically sitting there listening to her because she is, she's been, she's been at this for about five years. Oh, it's wow. About, it's a little bit longer than any of any of the rest of us. I'm, I'm maybe like three and a half or something like that. So I'm just like yeah. sitting at her feet, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> notes, you know, but it's going to be called trans surf and chill. So, um, I think the first one of those should come out like Friday or something, but she's just, Oh, like, that's pretty cool. It's, it's going to be really intensive and there's gonna be a lot to it. Um, but, um, but yeah, anyway, any way you want to uh, collaborate would love to to do that with you absolutely i love that too awesome. and yeah man it's been great speaking to you it's truly been a pleasure meeting the bootsy greenwood the quasi joe here <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's a pleasure. It's nice. Like, like I said, you know, if we're crazy, at least, uh, at least we're in good we're crazy place. together. Exactly. And I appreciate the time, uh, you taking the time out of your day to, to speak with me and, and yeah, let's, uh, let's continue to be in touch and, uh, absolutely all the folks out there. Thanks so much for watching and, and, uh, be sure to check out quasi and, some of his videos and we just continue to saturate in this knowledge, you know, um, is there anything, uh, you personally want to, uh, plug or promote, uh, before we get off of here? Consciousness for sure. Consciousness. Awesome. Consciousness. I'll, I'll hop on that bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be thank in you touch. Man. You too. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too.